from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Actifio Data Driven 2020, brought to you by Actifio. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman. This is the Cube's coverage of Actifio Data Driven. Uh, happy to welcome to the program the co-founder and Chief Product Officer David Chang with Actifio. Thanks so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the Cube. Great to be here, Stu. Thank you. All right, so the, the, the big theme of the event is the next normal. Uh, of course, we've been talking about transformation of data for many years, but the, the global pandemic has put a, a real uh, emphasis on some of the transformations that customers are going through uh, and alluding to that, that next normal because uh, definitely things have changed a bit. What, give us, if you could, kind of the high level, you know, what you've been seeing. You've been there since the start for Actifio. So, you know, what, what, what is that next normal for customers? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say over the span of the last two years, we've seen uh, definitely a accelerated ramp into the clouds. Uh, but I think this whole pandemic has really accelerated. I mean, this really telltale sign came in. When we uh, actually, prior to the pandemic hit, we closed a large European customer. And uh, within a span of two weeks, they were saying, you know, I can't get access to my data center for all the important work that I have to do. And with Actifio, I'd like to move everything into the cloud. So within a span of three weeks, we were able to move a lot of their critical workloads with, uh, with them. So I think that gave us the telltale sign that this thing is really, truly accelerating. Yeah, it, absolutely, there's that acceleration. It's tough to move data though. It's, it's not like we can just say, okay, hey, you know, we've got petabytes, uh, you know, the, the laws of physics uh, still, um, and still are in place. And also with that move to cloud, you know, backup and recovery, uh, you know, disaster recovery, um, you know, still critically important. So and any learnings that you've had this year or things where you've had to, you know, help out customers as they say, we need to move fast, but we also need to stay secure and we need to make sure that our, our, our data is, is, is safe. Absolutely. So I think there is a major difference between the lift and shift model in terms of your, app, your application infrastructure and then the actual foundation building block you're using, those pieces are very difficult to lift and ship because cloud fundamentally present different set of building blocks. A great example here is that object storage. You know, it's the uh, most scalable and lowest cost uh, storage available in the public uh, sort of cloud hyperscaler infrastructure. And without that, trying to move it to the cloud would be a very difficult indeed trying to make the infrastructure match. So, so let's dig in and talk a little bit about how cloud really transforms storage. You know, back in the storage industry, we've talked for a long time that you know, object was the future and that's, that's what cloud was built on. So you've got large scalability, uh, you, you've got some great cost efficiencies. You know, what, what, what does that mean to the activity of solutions and, and your customers? Yeah, I think, uh, from the very beginning, I would say, I recall this conversation three or four years ago when we were looking at what are some of the next generation architecture we want to build the Actifio technology on. It was very clearly that object storage needs to be front and center in everything we do. It's a, not a, uh, it's a, maybe a little um, a known fact, but Amazon AWS service initially started with um, the S3 architecture, and that was the very first service they brought live within the, uh, the AWS sort of product portfolio. So it is as fundamental to the cloud as you know, EC2 more so than containers and so on and so forth. And the fact that you have this almost linear scalability horizontally to exabytes, exabytes of storage, and the fact that you can essentially leverage all the performance you need to get out of the object storage uh, that's all built into the environment. Those are some of the critical pieces and obviously the low cost, you know, compared with uh, SSD or spending drives on the, e on the EC2 environment. Those are all some of the critical elements on why object storage is so critical in this whole cloud migration, if you will. Yeah, I wonder if we could talk a little bit about the application side of things, because of course the architecture matters, but it's really the, the outcomes. It's the, the reason we have infrastructures for the applications. And of course, one of the most mission critical applications, <laughs> we talk about data, it's those databases. Uh, we've seen a lot of transformation uh, in the database world. Most customers I talk to now, it's not their one central source of truth. They now have many databases, uh, and especially in the cloud, we've seen that kind of Cambrian explosion uh, of options out there. What, what has that meant for your customers 
you know, take us inside, uh, you know, that most important database world. Yeah, I think uh, any customer with their interest to go into the cloud or minimize the on-premise um, environment anyway, uh, the very first thing they think about is what are my most critical application I need to move, right? Databases are typically it. Um, you know, there are companies that has a lot of, um, I would say, projects around migrating some of the traditional databases into NoSQL or even hosted services like RDS. But I would say the vast majority of the database population that's in fact, uh, that's essentially in production today are some of the traditional databases. So that tend to be, also tend to be the most difficult problem in terms of trying to migrate the workload to the cloud or DR or business continuity into the cloud. So, so, so David, how about, uh, you know, what is new from Actifio now? What should customers be looking at uh, when, when it t we talk about uh, the, the, the storage capabilities? So I would say the first thing is that um, Actifio allow our customers to kind of maintain the legacy databases they use. And by using Actifio, we normalize the entire cloud infrastructure so you can get all the same RPOs and RTOs that you're used to on premise into the cloud. And through the adoption or of object storage down deep into the foundation blocks of our architecture, now you can have sort of the best of both worlds. You can have this on-demand capability you're using from the public clouds. You are you know, getting capability as you need them, but also you can leverage sort of object storage without changing your application architecture to get that performance and get to the sort of the cost point that you need to, to make that entire business viable. I think relatively recently, we did a uh, ESG sort of a project that um, really validated that you can get 95 to 97 per, uh, percent of the performance of SSD, but rather on object storage. And from a cost saving perspective, uh, that, cost save, that cost actually went down by 88%. So it is indeed the best of both worlds, if you will. Yeah, well, you know, explain that more a little bit more if you could, yeah, because right, you want that scalability, uh, you, you want high performance, but you know, there, there's always been those architectural trade-offs. So, what is it that that Actifio does? Uh, you're talking about the object storage, that that pairing with uh, with, with the cloud capabilities. Help us understand, uh, you know, what what is uh, differentiated about that solution. Yeah, absolutely. So, I think in some ways, object storage has been a, getting a bad rap in terms of uh, people's perception of slow performance and so on and so forth. But I think uh, the real reason is, is because other vendors are using it uh, incorrectly, if you will. A lot of things we've seen in the past has uh, like legacy backup vendors taking sort of a, looking at object storage as a tape replacement. With all object storage system, there is a fundamental limit on a per object performance you can get out of the entire object infrastructure. But the, really the secret sauce Actifio came up with is to design an infrastructure that natively translate block or file storage that, for example, Oracle or SQL consumes. And then taking that uh, data sort of, if you will, from the application perspective and divide it into hundreds of thousands, if not millions of objects, and that could be spread across the entire object storage infrastructure. And this is how we get, you get the performance, if you will, that's very, very similar, if not almost identical to SSD, even on object storage. Yeah, I, I saw a blog post uh, on the Actifio site, uh, making a comparison to the Snowflake uh, database. Uh, of course, you know, super hot company, lots of adoption uh, in, in their cloud service. Uh, help us understand a little bit, uh, you know, that, that, that comparison uh, that, that your team's making. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's a very interesting insight. I think uh, both Actifio and Snowflake probably independently arrived at the same conclusion about four or five years ago that object storage is the foundation building block. And this is how you scale massive infrastructure at a cost that's effective for business models, right? So I think uh, in many ways, if you look at how Snowflake works is they leverage this, this, this almost infinite scalability of object storage to consume sort of this data lake, uh, to store this data lake, and therefore they can effect, effectively offer that basic service to their customer at a very low cost point. And then when they actually decide, the customer decide to use that information, 
this is where the business model works and they actually start charging the customer. So that foundation building block of object storage on, you know, in terms of the fundamental building block for the Snowflake service, I would argue is also the reasons why they're so popular today. Yeah, David, you know, we, we, we've seen, uh, you know, quite a change in the landscape uh, since the, the early days of Actifio. Uh, it, it's interesting to hear you talk about those analogies of some of those, you know, cloud native solutions. Uh, give us a little bit of insight. You, you're, you're the chief product officer. Uh, you know, what, what's the biggest change you'd say of Actifio today versus, you know, maybe how, how when people first heard of the copy data management, uh, you know, technology? Yeah, I would say, I think we were kind of fortunate that when we started the company, the fundamental premise of being very efficient, very scalable, and instant reuse is a sort of fundamental premise of our product and architecture that has held true through a technology evolution, you know, three or four different waves in the last, I would say, 10 years. So I think uh, what's kind of the biggest difference between, I would say, uh, now versus Actifio five years ago is that everything uh, with everything we do we're thinking cloud first. This is how you know essentially the Actifio platform has evolved into this normalization platform for enterprise customer to achieve the same RPOs and RTO, the same applications, and be able to using the, the some of the the same building blocks across both their you know hybrid infrastructure and also public cloud infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely. That that hybrid discussion has really dominated a lot of discussion in the last couple of years. Uh, a, a challenge for uh, the, you know the engineering teams is architecting into uh, those environments. It's not just once you've got Amazon, you've got Azure, you've got Google, you've got others out there. What what are you seeing? It, it doesn't feel like we have a standardization, uh, and there's specific work that you need to do. Um, but your ultimate customer. They want to be able to do it the same way, no matter where they are. Give us a little bit of what you know what you're seeing as some of the challenges and how Actifio is facing that. Yeah, I think there are fundamentally two ways to go to the cloud. I think one is to entirely consume a lot of the higher level functionality that Amazon, Google, and Azure has. Right. That mean that does mean rewriting your application from scratch to take advantage of that. I think some of the benefit there is. You have some very low entry cost, and you don't have to worry about operationally how to keep that going. But I think more commonly, what we're seeing customer, enterprise customer do is to taking their existing stack, rewriting portions of this, and kind of build it on EC2, you know, uh, and uh, container environment. And those are sort of, I think, uh, more of the more popular choices that people are making in terms of making the move to the cloud, at least from an enterprise customer perspective. And that is an area that Actifio could really help by, again, normalizing what they're familiar with on-premise to the cloud. And we can provide the same service level and provide really this level of flexibility for you to shift workloads back and forth to make that work for your business case. Yeah, I, I'm curious. I, I remember back, you, you talked about Actifio five years ago. In some of the early days, it was like, well, you know, the traditional storage companies might not like Actifio because at the end of the day, they're going to sell less capacity, and that's really how they price things. It feels like the cloud providers think about it very different. You don't really think as much about, you know, I don't buy capacity, I have scalability, I build out my applications uh, in a certain way. Um, do, do you see that cloud model taking over? Any other comparisons you'd make, kind of the, the, the cloud world versus the data center world? Yeah, I think uh, it really, I think that, that really the switch is, is very, very telling, right? It's very, I would say in some ways, surprised a lot of people at the pace and, and that it has happened. Um, but I think it is, um, that pace is pretty solid at this point. I mean, we, we are seeing broad adoption of sort of that strat strategy all over the world and uh, it's only accelerating. All right, final question I have, let's bring it on home. That, that, that next normal, what do you want customers to have as their, their takeaway from this year's data-driven event? I think they are, I think the, the, probably the most important thing we want to communicate to our customer and potential prospect is that you can have the best of both worlds, right? It's not a one or, or other decision you have to make. You could be in the cloud and enjoy a lot of the same benefits and a lot of the same service level that you're used to, but taking advantage of that, you know, there is a separate, very large company running world class operations for you in the cloud. 
the elasticity of that capability is very important as well. But with Actifio, without having to rewrite your application per se, you can have advantage, if you will, to, of the new world, still maintaining the presence of the old, and you can manage both environment in the same way. David Chang, thank you so much for the updates. Great to catch up with you, and uh, th thanks for having us at the event. Thank you, Stu, for having me. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.